Now let's see this uh, second normal form. So using the second normal form we can eliminate some uh, redundancies. I'll take an example and explain you before going with the definition. Let us say we have a table A, B, C and the dependencies, the functional dependencies given on this table are let's say like this. One is A, B determines C and the other one is B determines C. Okay. So first of all try to find out the candidate key. If you try to find out the candidate key on the right hand side you don't see A and B. Therefore, every candidate key should definitely contain a b because they cannot be determined by any of the functional dependencies. So, the candidate key itself should contain it. Okay. So, let's find out whether a b is sufficient. See, a b are necessary to be present in the candidate keys. So, let us see if it is sufficient to be the candidate key, which means if I find out a b plus, I want to see if it is covering everything. Now, I get a b. And because of AB, since AB is in the left hand side, I can add C. Therefore, everything is covered by ABC. So, what can we say? AB can be a candidate key, right? Now, if you observe these uh, functional dependencies, the C. Now, whenever you find out the candidate key, these attributes A and B are called as key attributes. So, in this case, the key attributes or prime attributes sometimes called as prime attributes, sometimes called as key attributes. Both is one and the same. Now, A and B are key attributes and non-key attributes in this case is only C. Now, if you observe this, key attributes are completely, you know, determining C, which means C is completely dependent on the uh, candidate key in this case. But if you see this dependency, C is a non-key attribute and it is depending only on the part of the key isn't it what is the key candidate key a b and now only a non-key attribute is depending only on the part of the key so such a dependency is called as partial dependency and because of this partial dependency the original table might have some redundancies i'll show you what kind of redundancies it might have let us assume this a b is the candidate key therefore a1, B1, C1 and then A2, B2, let's say C2 and again see this, A and B combinedly is going to be the candidate key, therefore the only requirement here is A and B should be unique for a tuple, which means A can repeat like this A1 as long as A and B doesn't repeat. So what I mean to say is, see this. Now I can have A1, B3. If you observe this, A1 and A1 are repeating, right? Which means the attribute, the uh, values of A is repeating. But then if you take the value of AB as a whole, it is unique. See this, A1, B1, A2, B2, A1, B3. Got it? So that can happen here. So now let us say it is C3. And assume that we have now A3, B3, A4, B3, A5, B3, like this, let's say A6, B3. Now observe this. So in all the uh, in all the tuples, if you see this, A and B are unique. A and B taken together are unique, right? Now if you see this dependency, B determines C. What does it say? Given a value of B, you should be able to determine the value of C uniquely. Right. Given a value of B, you should be able to determine the C uniquely. What does it mean? If you say that B value is B1, then you should be able to say that C value is C1. Right. And if you say that B value is B2, you should be able to see that C value is C2. From this table I am saying, right. If it is B3, then you should be able to see that it is C3. When will this one happen? For every repeated values of B, C also should have the same repeated value. Isn't it? So, what I mean to say is, here also C is going to have C3, C3, C3. Then only you can say that for every, you know, a value of B, C is going to be unique. Which means if you say that it is B3, it is B, C3. If it, if you have some other value, let's say C4, then this doesn't hold anymore. Isn't it? Let us say, for B3 you have C3, and for B3 you have C4, then this functional dependency doesn't hold. Since we are already saying that this functional dependency is holding, 
for every value of b3 i mean for every place wherever there is b3 there has to be c3 now if you observe this this entire thing is a redundancy why we are repeating the same value many times and this redundancy is mainly because of this partial dependency so what is partial dependency uh, part of the key right we are depending on the part of the key c is depending on the part of the key so whenever you see such a redundancy and if it is because of this partial dependency we can eliminate this dependency by making it a separate table that is called as decomposition now if you are going to decompose the table like this let us say abc is the table now if you see a partial dependency just find out what is the closure of the left hand side now what is b plus if you find out b plus you are going to see that b plus is bc which means with b you take out c and make it a separate table and let ab be in one table right hmm. now if you decompose it this way okay so why to maintain b here as well as here whenever you see you know we decompose a table always try to have some common attribute there and the best practice is to maintain the entire candidate key in one table and the part of it in the other one and now if you find out the intersection that intersection should be a key in one of them that is called as lossless decomposition see what i mean to say is even though you are decomposing it now later you might need uh, you know to merge them so why do we need to merge them is if you want to find out the relationship between a and c let us say you got a query where they are asking given the value of a what is the value of c now after decomposing the table there is no way you are going to see that then what we do is we again merge them right so when we merge them we we want to get the original table as it is if you don't have a common attribute based on which you are going to merge you might get spurious stuffs that is called lossy right now as long as you are going to maintain a common attribute and if that common attribute is a primary key for one of the tables your decomposition is lossless we have already seen that right so what is that i'm saying now if you see the intersection the intersection is b now b has to be a key in one of the tables now if you look at the functional dependencies so b determines c will be applicable here right which means b is a key for this table therefore it is definitely lossless got it okay now let's see this so what will the table be table will contain a1 b1 a1 b1 a2 b2 i'm just writing all the values again a1 b3 and again a3 b3 and again a4 b3 a5 b3 and then a6 b3 okay and now coming to the bc part there is only b1 c1 b2 c2 and b3 c3 now if you see this i am not repeating the values of c3 so many times so that is how uh, you know eliminating this partial dependency is going to help us right but if you see this redundancy this cannot be eliminated so this is present in the original table that can never be eliminated because ab is the key but you can eliminate this redundancy redundancy to some to some extent now if you see this is a small table you might feel that you know there is no improvement bigger improvement but if you can go to a scale where uh, these entries are going to be 1000 times then you will see a lot of improvement there got it so let's see the definition here in 2nf we do not allow any partial dependencies so partial dependencies means dependencies of this kind a relation schema capital r is in 2nf if every non prime attribute if every non prime attribute capital a in r is not partially dependent on any key of r so if you see this this non key attribute is partially dependent on the key isn't it so that is called as partial dependency if you don't have such dependencies then it is called as second normal form a functional dependency x determines y is a partial dependency if some attribute a belongs to x can be removed from x and the dependency still holds so what they mean to say is if you have if you take this a a b determines c hmm is a dependency now it is called a partial dependency if you can remove some part of it 
and the dependency still holds then that is called as partial dependency right so this is one other way of identifying the partial dependency so best thing is you find out the candidate key and if you see the left side is a part of it then you can identify that it is a partial dependency also right side should be a non-key attribute okay with more examples you will be able to understand this okay